So we're out here in Sutherland. It's a boys' weekend. <laughs> the seven, the seven of us. We stargazing. We went to salt. We're out in the dorp. We're eating out. We're camping. We're brying. We're making marshmallows. Woo! The trip to the Northern Cape has been amazing. It's a four-hour drive from Cape Town. But if you want to see how we got here and what we did, watch this video. Let's go! <laughs> This week on Off The Beaten Tack, myself and the boys ventured out to the Northern Cape, all the way to Sutherland, a little town tucked away 350 kilometers away from Cape Town, roughly four hours. This place is the number one stargazing spot in the Southern Hemisphere. So if you live in Cape Town or in South Africa and you haven't been to Sutherland, you need to make a plan. We hooked up with Jich, the owner of Stairland, and we did some stargazing in the evening. What an experience. We set up camp. We're a bit sweaty and hot. It's stupidly hot. It's like 38 or something. So we're gonna go watch the stars with Jirg now. He's got his own telescopes. And uh, he's gonna show us the stars. And it's a clear evening. It's just hot. Very hot. Good evening a warm welcome. I hope you will enjoy what I'm about to present to you. You are supposed to write your exam now, but I feel a little bit sorry for you because we've got some cloud cover. So we're first going to look and then you're going to write your exam and maybe after that we're going to look until uh, you are satisfied. But now think, that is only one second. So the moment you talk about a light year, never think about time, but about the distance covered in that period. So it will be 300,000 kilometers per second times 64 a minute. And you know the phrase by now, our men are from Mars, women from the... Okay, you can come to me. Please keep your eyes 10 millimeters away. Look straight ahead and down. After the stargazing tour, Jörg takes you into his private little auditorium. We then takes you through everything you've seen piece by piece explains to you so you know what you really saw because most of us look at the sky and see Orion's belt but we don't really know what's Orion's belt we hear he shows you exactly what he's your kids will love it because there's real dinosaur fossils so if you've got kids that's into dinosaurs they need to see this they can even go home with a little dinosaur egg so I'm here with Jörg Wagner the owner of Sterland stargazing campsite. He's got 15 campsites with a splash pool and he does private stargazing shows every night. He's got seven Celestian motorized telescopes. You won't believe what you see here. I'm going to put some pictures at the top of this gear and you'll see what it looks like here in the evenings. Um, Jörg, stars, is this the clearest we're going to get in the southern hemisphere? I think so. Uh, at the moment there's a little bit of moon in the sky. So you must always remember that when the moon is up, the, the moon is now rising. It is full moon on the 10th now. So every night you get a little bit more moon, more moon. But when there's no moon, mm. uh, 10 times better than what and you And what time. months of the year would you would you say is best for people to come down? E every month is a good month. Uh, okay. We I have a sort of a surprise for you that when the moon is up, you take your cell phone, preferably a Samsung, of course, yeah. because the, the picture quality is so much better. You're a Samsung guy. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I'll let you take a photo with your phone through the eyepiece of a telescope, and mm. that makes a very uh, memorable... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a picture also now of, of the moon that I took with my iPhone through the eyepiece, yeah. and you must see the clarity on this. Like, I've, I've looked through a lot of camera lenses and stuff, but I've never been able to see each and every crater and curve and indent on the moon like these yeah, telescopes. I mean, and, and, and that's the difference. I think that, that in a way is why I am successful here, because I really like what I do. Mm. And it's a case of that even if there are only two people at night or 50 people, I will give you the same input because it's not fair that I mm. if I have few people you're just gonna rush it off and, and finish it off like that. Just because it's two people? Yes, yes. So for me uh, uh, I'm addicted to the stars now. 
and uh, what counts in my favor is that we are in the best place in South Africa. Mm. If you cut the, the world in half, we've got the largest telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. I mean, what, what more do you want? Eh? And also the fact that we have more than 80% cloudless nights makes it so. The night is a little bit cloudy, which is most unusual, but we need some rain. Remember, we haven't had proper rain for more than five years now. So the village has still got uh, water, but there are very strict water uh, restrictions now, and you've got to be very careful because one day there might not be water anymore. So the thunder weather cloud that you see here, um, we are really holding thumbs and, and hope something good will come out of it. But we, we need lots of rain. But we're grateful for what we got and we enjoy a magnificent lifestyle, you know. We're busy because we've got many uh, uh, businesses, but that's not the point. The point is that do what you do, do it well. Like last night was amazing, you know. I didn't know what to expect. We came in, I thought, okay, you're probably just going to show us a star here and a star yeah. here. But I mean, the quality of the show, I mean, you went in depth and you made us look at, and the, I didn't expect to see the planets like that. Actually. And I didn't expect this place to be that amazing, you know, like you look at it on, on pictures and you know, you look and you think people probably edited the pictures. But I mean, we came here now, your show was amazing last night. I mean, you stand there with the, with the, with the naked eye, that's what you see, you know, it's just, so what made you, what made you do this? What? Look at it, it's, it's a terrific story. We thought that uh, we stayed many years in Swellendam that we're going to retire here. The main story is the following, that uh, I met my wife Rita when we were 19 years old. And her father used to be the town clerk here in Sunderland in the 50s. So we've been coming and going here many, many years, but I hated the place because it's so cold, you know. And, and now you love the place. And the dirt roads and everything. And now I'm, I'm just absolutely crazy about it. And all credit goes to her because, remember, in 2000, they started building the salt telescope here. Mm. So we came uh, January 2002 because she just had that hunch, you know. Sutherland for her was very special and she made it for me special. So we came here, uh, we, we built a house. I had to sell my car uh, because the bank didn't want to give me finance, you know. And uh, I'm just laughing about all these things because everything just went from from good to better and so on and we're blessed with good health i do uh, cycling every the second day i do my own uh, august i do 30 k's you know every second day every you do 30 k's, uh, 30 k's yeah. and it's just nice i'm like i say i'm in in good health she's in good health and uh, we love the place i think that's amazing okay. we've got uh, a number of guest houses and we've got the camping site here we've got the swimming pool more like a splash pool, but you can cool down there. I do the stargazing basically every night, except old Christmas and old year. That I regard as uh, precious for my family. And even if you pay me whatever you want to pay, um, I just don't miss them. It's, it's not fair, you know. Two nights in a year, I think uh, that is my priority. Yeah, there. Makes sense. Absolutely. It's, it's just unbelievable. Like I can't reiterate enough how insane it is to be out here. It's hot, there's no clouds. It's a bit of wind today, but I mean, a bit of wind with like 36 degrees. So you have to understand that it's really hot, but it's a perfect family place. I mean, kids love it. I love it. I mean, I've definitely, my wife's not with me on an all boys weekend, like I showed you in the beginning, but I definitely want to bring my wife out here. And I want everybody to come out here because I mean, at the end of the day, it's these small towns. If you don't support them, they wither and die. And they've got so much more to offer. I mean, we've all done, like I said to you in the beginning, like in our previous videos, we've all done Langaban and Nizanda and Godini and wherever you go. But there's so much that's hidden in small towns that people miss out, that they don't go to. You know, like your Sutherlands, your McGregor's, your Mikey's Fontaine's. There's so many things. And you, you're only going to get to see those things if you venture out and go to those places. No, it's, it's the truth. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, people's got this, this idea that people, they're, they're very scared to, to just venture out and try something new because you know what if it's not what we want it to be. But the thing is, you're only going to find it if you try and you hi and this Pierre's wife. And then you're only going to find these places. And you know, you can go to a place and you, 10 people might say it's boring, but you could make it exciting. I mean, there's not much to do. And I'll be very honest with you, there's not much to do in Sutherland in the daytime. But you drive out, you look at the nature. You go to the little, there's a planetarium. Uh, we took a drive out to Salt. 
there's nice restaurants out here. We had a, we had a place, Old Mule. Yeah, really we had nice. a lunch at Old Mule. It's this, oh, it used to be the mill of the town that they changed that. But here, thank you very much. We, it's my pleasure. It's, a, it's, a, it's probably the shortest weekend I've ever had. Yeah. Should have been long, yeah. you know. Um, but I'm definitely coming back. Yeah. And we also got Yaku, the geologist, you know. Yeah, these dinosaur his, fossils. These fossils, and he, he also does felt walks, you know, so you can, you can uh, liaise with him and he can take you out in the felt and it makes it very entertaining. Because okay, so there's the hikes, there's felt, you know? walk, felt walks, there's yeah. mountain biking. Yeah. And I forgot to say, if you've got kids that love dinosaurs, there's genuine di dinosaur bones. Yeah, and we've got dinosaur eggs, you know, that you can buy the and you can, can chop it with a hammer and inside is of a small dinosaur and we also give you a certificate that you can google and see what's the history of so it's kid friendly yeah. so get get in your van your car come down to southern you don't need a 4x4 to come down yeah, here mr b copy tango 7 copy tango 7 over after breakfast, we decided to explore the town a bit. We stumbled upon this cute little planetarium in the main road. And then also my favorite thing when going out on the long road is looking at the old churches in these old towns. You always find these amazing steeples. And then for the afternoon, we headed out to SOT, which stands for South African Large Telescope. Now, if you're coming out the side, there's no point if you're not coming to SOT. Your kids will love it, they've got dinosaur eggs, nice exhibitions, a little gift shop. I wonder what those shoes are for on the gate. Sutherland's such a small quaint town. It's got so much to offer, as small as it is, it's a really nice place to go to. Then we decided to head back because there was a thunderstorm on its way. And you all know camping in a thunderstorm, scary experience. Yeah, so this morning we are in Sutherland. 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 You know how far Sutherland is? Not that far. It's four hours away. <laughs> it's far. It is far, but, but it's one of the most worthy places to ever come. We saw the stars. We're in the middle of nowhere. It's hot. It's a bit of a breeze, but it's not a cold breeze. Mm. It's a warm breeze. But what is lucky about coming out to this side of the world is that you get so many things that you can do that you're not used to seeing in Cape Town. And there's so many, we met a nice couple now that's touring also. So this morning we're making breakfast, we're making bacon and eggs with rolls. Because we don't have the ladies, this is a boys weekend, so there's no feta this weekend. And there's no croissants. And there's no salads. And there's no salads. <laughs> I mean last night we had a dry roll. And on the dry roll we had... Uh, yep. Chips. Chips, that's yes. Dino's in the tin. And we had... I don't chips. Know, we just had chips. <laughs> we just had chips. You say. I could cock man! <laughs> you know, at least both like chicken strips or something. Anyway, but it was liquor. So now we're gonna make breakfast, you can watch. So when you find yourself out in Sutherland, there's only one place to stay, and that's stay like you've got the astronomy, the wildlife, the dinosaur display. Don't forget the kids can take home little eggs. The place is just so perfectly laid out. It's so pristine and clean. All thankful to Yerk's wife. You've got these bombers that just protect you from the wind so you can always make a fire. The evolution is just perfectly clean and nice hot water. You've got the camping stands. There's 15 stands in total. You can either camp or bring your caravan on it. I'd say they're roughly about 10 meters by 10 meters. But you've got power at each point, you've got your own little braai. So you don't have to bring a braai with or you don't have to go to the boma. And then obviously we've got the splash pool. It's not a swim pool, but on a hot day in the Karoo, you'd want a splash pool. All the campsites are surrounded by six meter trees that Jörg planted about 15 years ago. And they provide perfect and ample shade to your campsite. Well, Brian. 
With a fan. With a fan. Check it out. It's raining, but we got a fan. We're gonna make this bra work tonight. We're gonna frit the pibos. <laughs> Without the rolls. Without the rolls. We've got the rolls, but we're gonna frit it. After the storm passed, we managed to get done with the bra. Lick a bra by the fire. We had this little bowman we were sitting in. No wind, just the guys. Sutherland, you've been amazing. And then finally it was time to head home. The drive was long, it felt way quicker than the drive up. As you know when you're driving home it's always quicker than driving up. But it's a drive I wish lasted a bit longer. It's driving through the countryside, through Cape Town, through the Western Cape, through the Northern Cape. It's just really beautiful. It's something that every South African needs to experience. So Sutherland you've been amazing and we're going to be back sooner than you think.